sequencer load, the last of the sequencer instructions. You may actually find this instruction more useful than SQC and SQO because a sequencer load instruction loads 16-bit values in sequence as you trigger the control. Sequencer load instruction. We have three rungs. The first rung is a free running timer. It's running on a time base of one hundredth of a second. It has a preset of two hundred which means it's going to run for two hundred hundredths of a second or two seconds. Then it's going to be done. Rung zero goes false. Then the next logic scan it's going to start up again. So that rung will be false every two seconds for one program scan. All that gut does is gives you a moving target. In other words, the value for the accumulate, the accumulate register in the predefined data type, timer type, T4 colon 0, T4 colon 0 dot accumulate, ACC, that is a moving target going from 0 to 199, 0 to 199, 0 to 199 every two seconds. It gives you a moving target, something to capture. And then in rung 1, as well as rung 2, we have a an enable bit, B300 and B301. Those do not have to be in there. Um, I usually put those in there in my labs to give you an opportunity to toggle them off if you want to stop action and look a little bit closer. So by controlling B300 and B301, you can pause, so to speak, the action for closer examination. Uh, and of course B301, you wouldn't want that on anyway because whenever that's on, that's going to fill N70 for a length of 20 with zeros. So you're going to cancel everything, clear everything, anytime B301 is on. So really, B300 controls the sequencer load instruction. You could even substitute um, an input for that, but we've only got six inputs and we wanted to use them all as part of our source. So if you look at the sequencer load instruction, you have a file. Notice the pound sign in front. You don't type in the pound sign when you uh, annotate the parameters in these instructions. You just type in N7 colon zero. As a matter of fact, you can type in N7 you can type in lowercase n, 7, semicolon, 0, and it'll pop up pound sign, uppercase n, 7, colon, 0. Then, of course, the source has to be the uh, location from which you want to um, load values, control word, length, and position. So, open data file n7, lock it on top, and resize it as shown. Toggle B3 one on and then off to ensure a clean start. So you clear out your stack or your 20 uh, registers for your sequencer load instruction. Then toggle B300 on. Change the state of any of the inputs every few seconds while observing N70 through N719. Do you ever get a value loaded into N70? You may have to run this a few times to see that. Basically, no. This is a behavior that you must keep in mind when using any of the sequencer instructions when you let them roll over. In other words, hit the end and go back to the beginning. That uh, definitely puts the first location in the file into a different category.